The word of God says in Genesis 11, starting with verse 1, And now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city of the tower, which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad, from there over the face of all the earth, and they cease building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may have a seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. That we are getting into the word that we already, I'm sure, at least we know of the story of the Tower of Babel somehow. And today we're going to see the lessons or lessons from a place named Babel. You read here the story and you see people, you know, men gathering together, being in an environment, they got to a plane. You know, so that place looks like something need to be built on it. And they have all that is required. They have the intelligence, they have everything. So they decided we're going to build here. And we're not just going to build a small thing. We're going to build a big tower. And we read the rest of the story and we see that God is upset. What, what can make God upset about people building a tower? You know, a, a gi <laughs> ginormous tower like the kids like to say. A big tower. This is a, a, a plan that they had, you know, to, to implement their intelligence. To build something of excellence. Something that is grandiose. What can bother God about that? Let's go back in the test. The word says, and verse 4 says, Let us build ourselves. Let us build ourselves a city. Let me stop right here. Let us build ourselves. There is one thing that God desires. If you go to Psalm 127 verse 1, the word of God says that unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Well, give us Psalm 127 verse 1 so that we can all see it. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. There is something that God desires as it pertains to his own children. When there is something that his children need to build, he wants to be involved. Regardless, yes, here it says house. But God is saying any kind of edifice that you are building, anything that you are building, whether it's your life, it's a business, it's, it's uh, whatever it is that you are building, God wants to be involved. He wants you to call on him so he can be there. Because if he is not in there, you will be laboring in vain. Now, go back to Genesis 11 verse 4. And they say, come and let us build ourselves. Nowhere does he talk about God. Nowhere do we see that they even pray to God. God help us build this tower. They say, let us build it for ourselves. And they say also, they want to build a city. A tower whose top is in the heavens. A tower whose top is in the heavens. We understand that the heavens is the Lord's throne. So here are these little tiny beings. I say little tiny because compared to God. These little tiny beings that because they have some kind of little bit of intelligence want to build something to reach the throne of the Most High God. Of course, this resembles what Satan did. This resembles people defying God. 
Because God said, the throne, my, the heavens is my throne. He said, the earth is my footstool. But even as he said that the earth is my footstool, he also said that the earth belongs to, the earth is for men to, to manage. The earth is somehow the throne of men. So men should be down there managing the earth and not come up there and defy God. And this is what these people are doing. Why are they doing this? Because of what God gave them. The intelligence that God gave them, the one language that God gave them, and the material that God made available to them. But let's stay close to this passage here. Still in Genesis 11. The word of God says, and I'm reading verse 4, And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in heaven. Let us make what a name for ourselves. Pride. It says that I will make a name for myself. Where does promotion come from? Promotion comes from the Lord. Promotion comes from the Lord. And pride comes before what? Fall. So when you decide to, to make a name for yourself, not because God is positioning you and God is wanting to do something, but you yourself, you decide to make a name for yourself because you have some kind of intelligence. You can defy God, and just like your father Satan did, you will make a name for yourself, and you will take on God's glory, where God does not share his glory. Let's make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the old earth. This is another problem. Because when God created man, what did he say? He said, be fruitful and multiply and do what? Thank you. They don't want to go replenish the earth. They don't want to go everywhere. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even stop there. When you go to the book of Genesis chapter 9, after the flood, God said again, go ahead and fill the earth. God's intention is for us to scatter all over the earth. These people are saying, you know what, we're going to build a city and we're going to build a tower so that we don't get scattered abroad. So that what God wants to do does not happen. Because we know better than God. Didn't he give you one language? You know, he gave us this one language because he wants us to be united. And so if we go all over the place, we won't be united. We won't be fulfilling the purpose of God. Uh -huh. It's not a matter of being in one place. It's a matter of what do you do when you are in that one place? Because in the book of Acts chapter 2, they were in one place and they were in one accord, expecting the promise of God. So being in one place is not a problem. It is what is the purpose of your being in one place? God does not want this type of unity. When people gather together to disobey him, the Lord does not want that. God saw the potential for iniquity, unity against God. And these people decided, you know what, we're going to build a city. We're going to build a tower. Not only would the tower go up all the way to heaven to defy God, but we are doing, we are building this tower with the purpose of blatantly disobeying God because he said that we need to replenish the earth. We said, no, 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 we're not going there. We are going to be in this little city that we are building for ourselves. So they defy God and they disobey God. As much as we always pray for unity for the house of God, as much as we all pray for unity among ourselves, our unity must serve the purpose of God. We cannot gather together in little groups to be an instrument of the devil. Somebody hear me and hear me clearly. Unity for the purpose of furthering the plan of God. Unity for the purpose of furthering the kingdom of God. Unity for the purpose of obeying the plan of God. That's what God is after. You need to be careful with all other types of unity. It may sound good, peace and love. But make sure you examine what's behind that peace and love. Mm -hmm. Because when you stop with those words, they sound fantastic. These are words in the Bible. But is it peace and love from God, which we desire, which we know that because God is not, God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. We go after people to share the gospel with them. We go after people to say that, you know what, you are better than this. God has so much for you in store. You are destroying your life. God loves you too much. He wants you to fulfill your purpose. 
We do this because we share the love of God. But there's another type of love and peace that's not what we want. We want the love of peace, love and peace that pulls people from the darkness. We want the love and peace that, that, that pulls people from the hands of Satan. We want the love and peace that pulls people from, from destruction. We want the love and peace that pulls people from, from the, the, the altars that have been built. From their family, from generation to generation to toward their purpose. We want to pull them from there and bring them into the kingdom of light. This is the love and peace that we want to share. Because the love of God is always for our good and for his glory. There is no plan that God has for us that is a plan of destruction. So let's continue on and read. They say, they say come let us build ourselves a city and a tower of those whose top is in the heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves. Lest, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Amen. I don't even know if I can move on from this passage because there is so much. They say that they are going to build a tower for themselves to reach the heaven. There's a way to reach the heaven that is only designed by God. You don't reach the heaven your own way. Whether it's why we are still here on earth and there's an, there's an issue and, and, and we are praying because as, as we like to say, we want to bombard heaven so that we can hear from heaven. There's a way to do that. Sometimes, while you're fasting, you're wasting your time because God is expecting repentance from you, for example. For example, he's, he's expecting you to forgive someone. And you are out there fighting, bombarding, doing all kinds of stuff. And nothing is working. Because there's a way to reach him for that particular situation. Hallelujah. Amen. And overall, for salvation, Amen. there's a way to reach him. Yes. He sent his only begotten son, and the word of God tells us that it is only through him that you will reach the Father. These people decided that they will reach heaven because they have the intelligence. They have the strategies. I mean, they know how to do it. But it doesn't matter what you know. Is it what God says? <coughs> Is God telling you that this is how you reach heaven? So these people, the word of God says that, that they had bricks of stones. And they had asphalt for mortar. I'm reading this and there's something else that, that I want to say. I'm, I might be stretching it a little bit. But I will, take, I, I will go that far. The word of God says that even if no one will worship God. God will even raise stones to worship him. They're using God's creation to disobey God. Instead of using God's creation to worship God, they're using God's creation to disobey God. Those very stones that God says that even if nobody was worshiping, he will raise those stones to worship him. They use stones to build mortars, to build bricks, because they have their own plans. All the nature that God gave us. Number one, there's no such thing as mother nature, I'm going to say. It. The nature that God gave us, that God gave us, it didn't just, it's not the universe. <laughs> the universe is uh, the universe is a creation. The nature that God gave us is intended for us to see the glory of God. Not only to, to, for us to use and everything, but to see the glory of God. Because even nature <laughs> paints a picture of the glory of God. When you walk around and you see those beautiful flowers, I know we don't see a lot of them here. But when you see nature, you see the beauty of nature, you say, wow, God. God gave them one language because God wanted them united. Like he wanted the disciples united in the, the, the upper room, waiting for the promise of God. Because in such unity, God is glorified. They use that one particular blessing, the one language, the unity, to do damage. But in such circumstance, there's something that God does. God scatters them. The word of God says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, 
the people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin to do come let us go down it started off by saying god said then here in verse 7 it said come let us go down I submit to you that not only was it God the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, but God went down as the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even as God is going down as the Lord of hosts to scatter everything that is happening against you, God came down as the Lord of hosts and everything that they were doing was scattered. God could have just stayed there, you know, on his throne. But God said, let me just come down and show them because they forgot about the flood. They forgot that I'm able to say one thing and everything can be destroyed. Let me just come. So the coming of God is a loving thing. Why? You see, sometimes God will cause, not, not cause, let me be theologically correct. God will allow some things to happen to save you and to save me. You see, uh, let me give you the story of the disciples. And this is in the book of Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 4. We understand as we read the book of Acts chapter 1, we understand that Jesus said that the people should stay where they will gather together in one accord, waiting. And once they receive the Holy Spirit, they are supposed to keep on staying in Jerusalem? No, they were not supposed to stay in Jerusalem. Now they are to spread Judea, Samaria, the other remote part of the earth. But once they received the Holy Spirit and they began to have a little bit of miracles, they said, well, this place is the best place to stay. They stayed in Jerusalem until they were persecuted. And the persecution caused them to now go <laughs> where God told them to go in the first place. So had they gone to begin with, there wouldn't have been any persecution. <laughs> You see, so sometimes things happen in our lives so that we can move. We like to stay in our little comfort zone, but things happen sometimes so that we can move. Let's read it. I gave you Act 8, verses 1 and 8. So 1 and then we'll skip to 8. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of what Judea and mm -hmm. <laughs> Samaria. Isn't that what Jesus, where Jesus told them to go? <laughs> so the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Let's read for. And there was great joy in the city. Something that started with persecution that ended with joy. The joy is actually the proof that they were now in the position that God wanted them to be. But to get into that position, there had to be persecution. First time, we need to ask the Lord, what is happening? What lesson do you want me to learn? And it's not always that you need to learn the lesson. It may be that people around you need to learn the lesson. But this must be a habit for us. Lord, what are you teaching me? I don't like what's happening, but what are you teaching and the Lord will reveal certain things to you because the sooner you discover it, if that is happening so that you can move, the sooner you discover it, the sooner you'll be moving. Amen. Persecution. And so these people say <laughs> that they are not moved. God say, oh, oh really, you're not moving, I'm coming. God did it to save them. If we are here today, it is because God split those people. Because I did not split them we don't know what the devil will have done of humanity. The internet is a very good example that evil can spread so fast when you speak the same language. We all speak the same language today, which is called internet. And evil spreads very fast. The good spreads fast too. But when something bad is happening, it also goes around very quickly. And God knew. That this was going to be destructive for humanity. He knew all along the plans that he had for humankind. He knew all along that he was going to send his only begotten son. And there was all this plan that needed to take place. And God would not allow for his plan to be thwarted. For his plan to be interrupted. God would not allow for his plan to be interrupted. God did not allow for his plan to be interrupted. God would not allow for his plan for your life. 
to be interrupted. Amen.